It's a historic night for Spokane Public Schools. They finally decided on the names for three new middle schools. We'll tell you those names, plus an update on their reopening plans for next year. The hot weather is on the way come next week, but first we have to track some gusty winds and the chance for thunderstorms come tomorrow. The fate of an entire city in North Idaho is up in the air tonight as it remains unclear whether Dalton Gardens will have a single working employee tomorrow. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem 2 News at 11. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hello everyone, I'm Regina on first up tonight. The Spokane Public School Board has finally decided on the names for its three new middle schools. They're also considering renaming the on track Academy. Krem 2's Morgan Trow is covering this one for us tonight and Morgan what they decide on. Mark, Regina, these names have been months in the making. The screening committee narrowed 1400 suggestions down to a dozen. Tonight, the school board chose the final four. Spokane Public Schools has officially named the three new middle schools, as well as discussing a possible name change for one of their academies. After discussion, the board unanimously voted on the following. The Northeast Middle School will now be the Denny Yasuhara Middle School, named after Japanese civil rights activists who taught at SPS for years. The Northwest Middle School is Pauline Flett Middle School, named after a Spokane tribe elder who preserved the Salish dialect and taught the language to future generations. The South Middle School is now Carla Pepperzak Middle School, after the Dutch resistance operative and Holocaust freedom fighter who moved to Spokane in 2004. And the On Track Academy will remain the same, except they are adding their principal's name. The full name will now be Lisa Madsen On Track Academy. Groundbreaking ceremonies are scheduled next week for Denny Yasahara and Pauline Flett. Carla Pepper's Act ceremony will happen once the school design is complete. And make sure you're watching Up With Creme tomorrow morning. Our Tim Fam will be live at the new school locations with more information on who they're named after. Reporting in the newsroom, Morgan Trow, Krem 2. Morgan, thank you. Also new here tonight, the SPS school board discussed and approved reopening plans for next year. They include lowering class sizes and keeping a focus on social emotional learning that has been important during this pandemic. The district has also released plans for in-person graduations for outgoing seniors. Krem 2's Ian Smay watched that meeting tonight. He is live in the newsroom to break down what was discussed and decided. Ian? Yeah, good evening, guys. The SPS school board approved that reopening plan to submit to the state during their meeting tonight. That reopening plan covered things such as class size and staffing at schools. The district will mostly follow the Washington Department of Health guidelines of three feet of distancing in classrooms and six feet in most other areas. But the district is also attempting to lower average class sizes. Their goal? An average of 18 students for elementary school classes and 24 students for core high school classes. The Department of Health also said in its recommendations that it will not be setting a COVID-19 vaccine requirement for students or staff. The district did say it has provided 2,000 vaccines through its efforts and it will continue contact tracing and other protocols next school year. The plan also calls for something called equity staffing, and that means allocating staff to different schools based on the needs of the community and student body that it's serving. This goes hand in hand with the district saying they will continue to focus on social emotional learning for students, which is something we've heard a lot about during the pandemic. With this plan, the district hopes to continue its focus on the emotional and mental well-being of students as we finally get to the other side of this pandemic. The school district has also released graduation plans for high school students. According to the district, 10 of the 12 high schools having graduations will be doing so in person. Each graduate will receive two general seating wristbands to provide to their guests, and there will also be vaccinated sections at these graduations, and students can trade in those two general admission wristbands for four vaccinated section wristbands. But to get in, people must provide proof of vaccination for that section. We have a full list of SPS graduation dates and times, as well as answers to commonly asked questions on our website. If you want more information on those SPS graduations, just text the word GRAD to 509-448-2000, and we'll send that link to your phone. In the newsroom, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. Ian, thank you very much. Let's talk weather now. Beautiful day across the in the Northwest. Memorial Day weekend also looking pretty fantastic, <laughs> but tomorrow could be a bit of a hiccup. Let's get right to Thomas Patrick, who is out on the Outdoor Weather Center for us here tonight. So Thomas, what can we expect going into this weekend? Yeah, well, the weekend's going to be very, very nice. And uh, as Mark alluded to, tomorrow is going to be a bit active weather wise. Before I get to any of that, I have to show you pictures from the lunar eclipse from early, early this morning, just after 4 a.m. This was a special 
spectacular shot. Great composition from Jeff Smith with the uh, lunar eclipse or the blood moon as it is nicknamed off into nine mile falls. If you just took a snapshot with your cell phone or smartphone, this is probably a bit closer to what it looked like. Still, you can easily see that red tint again from early this morning. The almost full moon has just risen off to the uh, east in our skies as of right now, still shining quite brightly out there for tonight, but the clouds are coming. Here's our next weather system might get a couple rain showers, but more importantly, going to be a windy day for tomorrow. Those wind gusts up to 40, perhaps 45 miles per hour for most of eastern and central Washington. It will come with a chance of showers and maybe even thunderstorms during the afternoon hours. Highs could get in the low 70s if it does stay dry in some of these locations. So a pretty dynamic system for us on Thursday, but temperature wise, we are going to ramp up very quickly over the course of the holiday weekend. I'll show you how hot conditions are going to be come next week in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you. Well, the fate of an entire city in North Idaho is up in the air tonight as it remains unclear whether Dalton Gardens will have a single working employee tomorrow. Animosity between city council members and the mayor have created an environment so dysfunctional that longtime staffers have simply started to resign. Only one employee is left. She too planning to step down. City leaders may try offering her a promotion in order to keep her around, but if that fails, there will be nobody to perform the basic functions of the city and City Hall will have to shut down. That controversy is enough to prompt some citizens to start talking about potential recall efforts as a last resort. The best case scenario would be if they change their tune and leave their politics at the door and maintain their positions as working for the public as civil servants and do the right thing rather than blocking everything they don't agree with because that doesn't represent any community. For more details on this quickly evolving story, just text the word Dalton to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you an article explaining all of this right to your phone. Avista has sold the historic steam plant to a developer in a press release. President of Avista Development Ed Schleck said, quote, For more than a century, we have taken great care of the steam plant property, and it's time to pass the baton to Gerald Dicker of GVD Commercial Properties, who has demonstrated his commitment to revitalizing and maintaining downtown historic properties. Avista just recently renovated the historic building in 2017, and the new owner says they plan to continue developing the site. It's a very cool site for sure. Yeah. All right, still ahead tonight, the good news for Gonzaga men's basketball just keeps rolling in. Today, word came that GU fans have been waiting to hear. Drew Timmy is returning. Why his return is such a big deal, not just for the fans, but also for the team.